Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. We've got futures well bid here up one and a half percent. Bulls trying to reclaim the narrative. Joining us, Katie Stockton. Going to take a look at some charts and get a little preparation for the session. Katie's a founder and managing partner at Fairlane Strategies, portfolio manager at TAC. Great to have you here this morning, Katie. Good to be here. All right. So uh, first, kind of take me through your approach here in assessing the last week. It's, uh, I think, a, a good time to think very technically because there can certainly be a debate about kind of cause, effect, how we got here. What do the charts say? Well, it's been really, really interesting, of course, from a technical perspective. It's not often that we see the VIX reach 65. So it's a really unusual environment where we've shifted from what we've expected to be sort of or shifted into a higher volatility regime. And we did so very abruptly, of course, with the spike in the VIX. But we do think that it's the start of a cycle that is going to see more corrective phases for the S&P 500, that the steep uptrend, you know, drawn back to the October 23 low is probably going to give way to something that looks a bit more like a either a gradual uptrend channel or even a trading range for a few months characterized by more short term volatility. So definitely an important shift. And it seems to be a shift that could hold relevance for at least a few months, if not longer. And so we're being really mindful of that. Now, short term, as you allude to, we are seeing a bounce. And that's very natural after you get a big VIX spike like that. So we are expecting more short-term upside as part of this bounce. And that's a bit of a gift from the market, an opportunity perhaps to reduce exposure or put on market hedges from a top-down perspective. And we would consider doing that because we do think that the corrective phase will keep hold beyond this bounce. And that's largely based on the loss of momentum that we've seen. Okay, uh, a really important point on just kind of settling a VIX, naturally kind of looking for a bounce back as that comes in from like extreme uh, panic mode. What would uh, suggest it's more than just a bounce? Uh, you know, if it really was just like this one time thing, bunch of people on the wrong side of the trade, in theory, that's what kind of folks are hoping it is. Uh, what levels on the S&P would say, OK, yeah, we really are kind of back on track? Yeah, you know, we can be hopeful about that. It's not the levels that really matter in that regard to us, at least in our process, but rather the posture of the technical indicators we track. So we're tracking momentum, we're tracking overbought or sold readings and on the side relative strength and market internals. And it's really those momentum gauges that we need to track very closely to discern whether a recovery rally is actually a resumption of the steep uptrend. We feel that's unlikely based on the deterioration that we do have underway right now on the weekly charts, on the monthly charts. But what it would require at a very minimum would be to see the weekly gauges turn up. Right. So they all point down at this time and that's supportive of the corrective phase. And with an upturn in those gauges, well, then maybe the monthly gauges would also recover from pending downturns of their own. So it's really a matter of watching these indicators, things like the MACD indicator, which is a, a very handy gauge of market momentum for a technical analyst, things like that. We want to make sure that those are aligned with the market. And right now they do point mostly lower. OK. And uh, those gauges, like breaking through moving averages and stuff, what are the highlights there, Katie? Well, we have seen the mega caps, unfortunately, you know, they've relinquished their leadership stronghold is the way I would put it. But they have also broken short term su support levels collectively, not all of them, but most of them, including NVIDIA, including Amazon for two. So these short term breakdowns are all the more reason to consider using the rebound here and then maybe coming week or two to reduce exposure just to avoid the downside follow through that tends to occur on the back of those short term breakdowns. These are not bearish reversals that we have in the mega caps. They are still solidly in long term uptrends. But within that context, we could see a few months of consolidation as we're expecting now from the S&P 500 based on the signals that we have on our monthly charts. So I think it's those breakdowns that are, are probably really the thing to focus on. And naturally, they've been associated with a pullback in the relative strength behind tech, behind discretionary, behind communication services. And at the same time, we've seen during the pullback 
more defensive sector rotation, very classically, you know, see rotation into healthcare, consumer staples, real estate, uh, you know, utilities, those tend to be the better performing sectors in relative terms when the market has lost upside momentum. And that's indeed what we've seen so far. So we'll expect a short-term retracement as we get a bounce, but then perhaps the more defensive sectors of the market become more attractive, at least in relative terms. Okay. And the downside, what looks reachable in the near term, uh, what would be surprising, what would kind of be within your realm of expectations? You know, on, on the, the levels, you know, we have the, the short term support for the S&P 500. We had it at 5240. So that's being tested effectively right now. It's a natural staging ground for a bounce. We're OK with a breach of a level on a daily basis, but we just don't want to see it hang down there. And we haven't seen that breach of that support yet. So that's our initial support for the S&P 500. Secondary support is roughly 5,000, so a nice easy round number there. And it's based on a previous gap on the chart and aligns pretty well with the lows uh, going back to April. So we, we feel that that would be an initial downside objective if we see our initial support level taken out. Mm. 5,000, it's not a terrible amount of downside from here, but after a bounce, it would probably feel like a, a bit harrowing. Okay. Yeah, the uh, 5,000, I think I see what you're saying, the gap from February and then the mm -hmm. uh, lows from the last time we were under some pressure uh, when folks were still thinking about bonds as the threat back in April. Okay, uh, a, a great level, to, great uh, uh, analysis there for the broad market. What else is like on the top of your list? Are you thinking about the Japanese yen? Are you thinking about bonds? Katie, what stands out in the last week here as uh, kind of being a priority chart to analyze? Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the Japanese yen and everything related to it on the macro front is certainly a driving force here. Um, and, and if we were to translate the S&P 500 comments to the Nikkei 225, I think it'd be pretty applicable. So we do look for more dollar weakness against the yen, but not in the very, very near term. We're looking for a rebound there too. I'd say even more importantly here for, for US stocks is uh, the breakdown in yields. So we have 10-year treasury yields having taken out our support level which was 4.13%. We'd been focusing on that level for a very long time. But with that, we have breakouts, of course, in uh, fixed income ETFs like TLT and IEF. And these are compelling to us. We have base breakouts and in fixed income that would suggest that we have a cyclical up move there to take advantage of. And of course, you pick up some yield at the same time. So we're interested in adding fixed income exposure with the breakdown in yields temporarily perhaps to bide time during a more neutral phase for the equity market. Okay. Uh, the bond situation, obviously extreme as we got down there. It uh, seems the market has uh, now officially formally moved on from bad being good. So maybe a silver lining, something positive there. The stuff that's worked, Katie, it seems like gold, a few of the uh, kind of uh, areas of safety that you mentioned in the stock market, kind of some of the anti-beta low vol stuff. Anything else we're missing that's proven itself worthy here in the last week? Well, we're recommending to our clients that they hold on to positions that are related to commodities. And that would include gold and silver, both of which have lost upside momentum and are pretty much range bound or in corrective mode. But we do expect those ranges and corrections to resolve to the upside, given positive long term momentum behind gold, silver. And uh, we're watching crude oil real closely in here. It's in a long term triangle formation near the bottom boundary, which is support for crude oil. And, and it would be a natural place for a rebound. The boundaries of the triangle are incredibly important because a breakdown below, we would expect very significant downside for crude oil prices, whereas a breakout above, we would expect quite the opposite. So it's pretty much neutral in between these levels that we're watching. But until we see a breakdown or breakout for crude oil, we would hold our existing energy exposure and uh, knowing that those triangles tend to be really high probability once they get the breaks. All right. Uh, good eyes. Uh, Katie is always on the charts. Very helpful for us. Appreciate the rundown. Great stuff. Of course. Katie Stockton, founder and managing partner, Fairlead Strategies.